Hello and welcome then to the first video in this beginner series looking at HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We're doing this series, which I guess you know by now, by writing a, a Space Invaders game. So following on from the last video, the introduction, then I've got Visual Studio Code open in front of me. There's many editors you can use. This is my editor of choice at the moment. It's really, really nice and open source and cross-platform. And to get started with this, we're going to, need to actually make a folder to, to work in, to put our files in. Uh, in Explorer here, Windows Explorer, you see that I've got a path, HTML invaders. I've made a folder here called ch1 for chapter one. It's empty at the moment. I'm just going to take this chapter folder, drag and drop it onto Visual Studio Code. And that opens then for us uh, in the left hand side in the Explorer here for us to be able to create files and do stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file and call this index.html. And this will be our main HTML page, so our web code uh, that we see in the browser for uh, our game. Now we haven't got anything in there at the moment, we need a starting point. And online on w3schools.com, in the uh, HTML tutorial on the home page of this, there's already an example and a nice template we can use to get us started. So I'm just going to paste this into Visual Studio Code and I'm going to hit Shift, Alt and F to auto format. Now very quickly through HTML, just in case you're not clear how it's all built up, it's a markup language built up out of elements. Um, we have a, a start of an element here called a head element um, and the end of it here. And you can see the tooltip actually tells us that it's a collection of metadata for the document. Nothing inside this element will be displayed. And in HTML, you have this concept of start and end of elements and you can have elements nested inside each other. So inside here, we've got the title and we'll change that now actually to HTML invaders so that our title on our tab is HTML invaders and then we have a body element here and inside the body all the things that will be shown on the web page are put inside the body so we have an h1 for a heading that'll be big bold text and a p is a paragraph as it says here and that'll be in normal text when the browser reads the page in the first thing it does is process the head and the metadata and then it'll start displaying the elements in the body one by one. And it'll be important later to be aware that it does this in the order that it reads your uh, the index.html file in. The first line here tells us that we're working with an HTML5 uh, web page. And then the HTML element here tells the browser that everything inside here is the HTML that we want to be processed and then rendered for our web page. So if we actually have a look at the file and see what we've got so far in our exciting web page, I'm just going to go back to Explorer into the ch1, there's our index.html, double click on that. And here we can see I've got the this is a heading and this is a paragraph. What I can do is I can, in my case, press Control, Shift and I. You can also go to the menu uh, and go to Tools and Developer Tools. But on most browsers, somehow there's an easy way of opening uh, Developer Tools. And two tabs are important to know here. One of them is the console tab, where we'll see output from JavaScript. And the other one is the elements tab, where we can see all the elements that have been rendered or read in by the browser. And we can see that the HTML invaders title is set on the tab here. We've got our H1 and our body. We can select them. And not just that, we can see further down the bottom here. I just scroll this up a bit. We can see the default styling applied to each of these elements. So the H1 here, we've got a larger font size, 2EM. We've got a bold font weight. If I go to the paragraph, we've got um, standard font size will be 1EM. Um, and yeah, not really any uh, relevant styling that does anything different than just put plain text on the page here. My browser is quite zoomed in here so that it works okay on the video. Yours will probably be uh, appearing a huge amount, uh, a huge amount smaller. So it's good to get familiar with the console, the elements, and the fact you can select the elements and then look at the styling because that's going to become very important later on when we start styling our web page. So we're nearly good to go, actually, um, to get coding. But one thing we've got to do is get um, JavaScript included and also jQuery up and running. So back in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to make a new folder called JS for JavaScript. Then I'm going to click back on index.html. I'm going to make a new folder called Styles. And in that folder, we're going to have all of our styles information. So going into the JavaScript folder, then I'm going to make a new file here and I'm going to call that file main.js and that will be our main JavaScript file for the application. 
And what I'd like to do here just for now is write something in JavaScript to the console. So this console.log, anything I put inside these brackets will be then written to the console. So I'm going to write a string, so some words to the console, and just put hello from main.js, very imaginative, and finish this instruction with a semicolon. And what this will do when it's executed is print hello from main.js in the console. To get it to do that, however, I need to include it inside my index.html because this is the page that's processed by the browser. So I'm going to put another element in, script this time, and I'm going to say that the source of my script is in JS, main.js, and the browser will know to expect a script file, a JavaScript, it'll recognize a JavaScript file, find it in this path, js, main.js, and when it loads that, it'll then execute the code that's inside this main.js file. An important thing to note is the location of where I've included this script. I've done it after all of the elements have been declared inside the body, and the reason is I kind of want my JavaScript to start running and be processed only when the main parts of my web page are actually being shown in the browser, otherwise funny things could happen. And in case there's a fun and, and actually in JavaScript there's a function which we'll see in a minute with jQuery where we can guarantee that we wait until everything has been processed before we execute our JavaScript. But for now we'll leave it like that and if we want to confirm that our JavaScript is working then we can go back to the browser, open up the console, I'll just make a refresh and now we get hello from main.js in the console so that we know our JavaScript is being executed. So the next thing I do then I'd like to uh, include jQuery also inside uh, our application because we'll be using jQuery to shorten a lot of the functionality that comes with JavaScript but the jQuery is kind of a wrapper for JavaScript that makes a lot of things easier to do uh, with a lot less typing and code and it's a very very uh, popular library found in most applications all over the world. So I'm going to make a new file uh, inside the JS folder and I'm going to call this one jQuery 331min js and what we need to do is we need to get this jQuery code so I'm going to go back to the browser on jQuery.com forward slash download on this site there is a download compressed production jQuery 331 here and I'm going to do control A C copy that code tab back into Visual Studio code paste it save it and that's our jQuery jQuery 331 min download it the only thing uh, remaining is to copy this script paste it into our index.html and we have jQuery up and running. So I mentioned this um, only running code when the document is ready. Well, a document ready in jQuery is represented purely by the dollar sign, the brackets, and then a semicolon. And anything inside here, a function or something, will be executed when the document is ready to go. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to write a function. Um, I'm going to call this function uh, speak just for now and then I'm going to put some uh, strange curly braces there so if you don't know JavaScript then a function is essentially a block of code that we can uh, execute from anywhere else inside our code if we write speak and then some curly brackets and we'll see some more advanced functions later on in the development of the application and when we put speak in the curly brackets somewhere in our code the code inside these brackets here will then be executed so I'm just going to go take this console.log, hello from main.js, drop it inside our speak function, and now I'm going to add on the end there just speak so we know that our speak is uh, happening there. And Then I want to execute the code in this defined by this function. So inside the document ready parenthesis here, I'm going to put a call to speak. What should happen is when the document is ready, speak will be executed and we should see the log onto the console. So back into the browser, just do a refresh, and now we can see hello from main.js speak, so we know that jQuery is included, up and running, and we've executed the function. Usually, however, it's not done by it like this. Usually we declare an anonymous function inside here and just write directly function, curly braces, and then a block of code like so, which will then be executed when the document is ready. So instead of having the speak there, I'm just going to put the console logging in here, and now I'll just put uh, hello from main, and I'll just put ready so that we know that uh, something else has happened. Save this, remove our speak function here, go back to the browser, refresh again, and now we've got hello from main.js ready. And by the way, I'm using control R to refresh, so I clear the cache. I think that's how it works on Google Chrome. 
Uh, if you're not seeing any changes, it might be because your cache isn't being cleared. And we can see here that we've got our document ready with jQuery then working and the code that we execute inside here is then executed uh, when our document is up, ready and going. So that's it then for this video. It's very basic, but it gives us a basic start onto building the application in the rest of the videos in the series. As ever, if anything's not clear or something's uh, gone slightly awry or you're not sure about something, feel free to put a comment below the video. Otherwise, uh, we'll get on with making the application in the next video. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.